Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year. So I just got a few comments to make and then uh, happy to take any questions from you, but also uh, Superintendent Tran and, and Staff Sergeant Anderson can answer any specific questions. They've been leading uh, most of this project over the last number of months, uh, and uh, hopefully they can answer some of your questions. So as police officers, every day we depend on the trust and support of the people we serve. It's a founding principle of modern policing that remains as true today as when the Vancouver Police Department was formed some 138 years ago. And while we already enjoy a significant level of support from the people we serve, we must never take that for granted. We must also work not only to maintain the trust we've earned over many years, but to support the officers who dedicate themselves to one of the most challenging and without a doubt, most highly scrutinized professions around. And that's why I'm here today to announce the launch of the Vancouver Police Department's body-worn camera pilot project. We've listened to the public and agree that this will be a step forward that will strengthen public trust and confidence and uh, support the officers as they work hard to keep our streets safe. Starting today for the next six months, approximately 85 frontline officers working in our traffic section, patrols, patrol officers working the downtown core and East Vancouver will begin deploying with chest-mounted cameras that will record their actions while on duty and interacting with the public. Their feedback and experiences during this six-month trial will help guide us through the development and impl implementation of a broader body-worn camera program, where we eventually expect to see all frontline VPD officers deploy with this technology. This pilot project was approved in November of 2022 and has been a long time coming. Body-worn cameras are something that we at the Vancouver Police Department have been advocating for for years. Chief Palmer, back in July of 2021, spoke in support of body-worn cameras to the Special Committee on Reforming the Police Act. Until now, the significant costs associated with purchasing cameras and storing data have made the technology cost prohibitive. But thanks to the funding from the Vancouver City Council and with approval from the Vancouver Police Board, We've been able to launch this pilot after extensive consultation with various community groups and stakeholders, including BC's Privacy Commissioner, which involved a comprehensive privacy audit report, health authorities, the Independent Investigations Office, the Office of the Police Complaint Commissioner, Vancouver Police Union, Indigenous and 2S LGBTQ plus groups, business improvement associations and service providers in the downtown east side, amongst others. We know this is a big change and we appreciate that some people in our community may feel uneasy about being recorded. We understand too that some may have questions about how the pilot program is going to work. We created a webpage at vpd.ca that goes into more detail about the deployment. And we'll, while we encourage anyone who has questions to take a look, just wanna take a moment to talk about some of the key points here today. The cameras will be mounted on the front of an officer's uniform in a way that provides an unobstructed camera angle and are visible to the public. Cameras will be activated for calls when there's a reasonable belief that there will be use of force or where violent or aggressive behavior is anticipated. Any officer who activates a body-worn camera will inform a person that they're being recorded as soon as possible unless doing so jeopardizes the safety of an officer or a member of the public. And officers are not required to have their cameras continuously turned on if they're not responding to a specific incident or interacting with a member of the public. For example, when you're doing office work or having a private conversation with a co-worker uh, or when on patrol but not responding to a specific call. There may be times when officers use discretion to not activate a camera, such as in a place of worship, in a hospital, in a, in a law office, in a private home, or they may encounter or when they encounter young children, victims of crime, or other sensitive situations. This approach is not something we've, we've taken lightly. We've given this careful consideration and conducted extensive work in our communities for months leading up to today. Through that work, we've reached a balance that protects people's rights and their privacy while also enhancing public trust in our work and giving our officers a new tool that will help them with, uh, serve their communities better. This tool will also protect officers from false or vexatious complaints. We hire excellent men and women to do a very challenging job. However, this tool helps to reassure and strengthen public confidence and trust. Then it's an important step worth taking. Uh, happy to take any questions they may have. 
Um, how was the footage we've stored and how do you make sure that they're similar? It's uh, it's through the solutions, uh, the proprietary solutions through the, the service provider and they've got encryption that in ensures that it's being secured. As you're well aware, body-worn camera has been up and running for decade for over a decade across North America, major cities. So security has been very well addressed uh, over the years and, and with other agencies as well. And how can they, you know, anticipate potential uh, dangerous interaction? Like, like, what do you? Yeah, uh, no, that's a fair question, and and I think that comes with experience with our officers, our officers' training. Uh, it's going to be left up to, in some cases, to the discretion of the officers. Uh, but also when they anticipate that something's going to happen, then they're going to turn it on. And then can you just clarify that 30-second loop? Like, are they going to be soundless for the first 30 seconds? That's right. Yeah, so th the first, it's a, it's a buffer mode that's on it. So if uh, all of a sudden you press it, it will capture 30 seconds preceding when you press the button, but there will not be audio associated to it. Only at that moment you press it, you'll have both audio and uh, video. Will there be repercussions or for what accountability to be in place if an officer chooses not to turn on a camera? Well, well sure. I mean, part of that is going to be the discretion of the officer, is going to be the, ju uh, the judgment of the officers. And as we've talked about before, um, we're balancing the privacy concerns that come into place. But, I mean, that's what the policy and the guidelines is there for, is to help guide our officers, especially in those initial first steps when we roll this out. Uh, it's going to be a learning process. And uh, that's why we... You know, we have oversight in this province, and that's why we have policies and guidelines that help establish when and when you should not be turning it on. I know you held a call recently. What was the main concern brought forward by people? Uh, um, maybe I should turn that one over to you because I believe you were part of that. Yeah, we've done a number of uh, public consultations. The general sort of theme has been privacy issues um, and, of course, costs and, and what you just stated. When can officers turn it on? When, when can they turn it off? What are repercussions when, when these things don't happen? So as Deputy Chow indicated, of course, we have oversight bodies. There's a police app. Uh, so officers will be trained um, to, to, to the standard that we expect them to be. These are guidelines, though. And so, so we're going to learn a lot of things as we move forward. Uh, and, you know, that's going to be implemented in the full implementation of the policy if that occurs. So. Any other questions? Uh, so right now, the camera is in what we call buffering mode. So as mentioned previously, it's basically recording on a continuous 30-second loop. So every 30 seconds, it's re-recording over itself. And this is just to provide some context to why an officer may turn the camera on and start recording. So it's not meant to you know, capture any sort of personal conversations or something like that prior to an incident, but just to sort of explain uh, a little bit of why they reach the conclusion like, okay, I need to turn this on right now. So Right now it is in that 30 second buffer mode. Uh, quick double tap. You hear that audio cue, it's starting recording as well as now there's a visual cue as well, the red lights on the front because in the end of the day, this isn't meant for uh, secretive recording. Like we want the public to know that we're recording. Part of the guidelines as well is that we're notifying the public and letting them know that they are being recorded, the interaction is being recorded. That's both uh, required by case law, but it's also, it's for their benefit and ours. So everybody knows that this is uh, in incidents being recorded and that <clears throat> we can count on this footage moving forward. So uh, every two minutes, it's also going to give an audio reminder. So it's going to beep, uh, pretty loud beep, just to remind the members of the public as well as the officer that it's recording. And it's also going to vibrate for me. So if I want to turn it off, it's... A, Unlike the activation with the two, uh, two presses of the button, it's just a press and hold for three seconds. That long tone signifies it's now uh, back into the buffering mode and the red lights have gone away, so. It is a pilot project, so it's gonna run the course of six months, but it's gonna be con consistent, continual evaluation along the way. So we've got four dedicated officers that have been working on this for the last uh, year or so. And uh, so throughout this next six month period, they're gonna be looking at any changes that emerges or anything that we need to deal with. So um, there, there will be, but a, in terms of a public feedback, no, there won't be until after the six month period and we've had time to assess and evaluate. 
just wanted to confirm on my last question about the accountability and sure. turn that turn that Chevron in. Is there anything actually in place right now with that camera? Doesn't get turned on and maybe it shouldn't have been? Is there re repercussions in place yet or is not yet? No, I mean, like, it really is a, is a rollout. And this is what the whole pilot project is, uh, is intended to assess. So, as you know, there's going to be some judgment and discretion that's going to be used by officers. Uh, but, you know, in the policy itself, uh, there are areas and situations where you shall uh, activate your cameras. And there's others where you don't, where it's left to the officer's discretion. So that's uh, what, I, what I suggest you do is go to vpd.ca and it lists it all out there. Just so if anybody has any questions on that. I'm just thinking, I don't think they're being used on the downtown side right now. No. To say to you, I don't want to be filmed. You can't film me. At that point, can an officer turn off the camera or ask to roll? Yeah, no, they can They can turn it off on that depending on the situation. If it's evidence gathering, a uh, serious incident that took place and we've got to capture it, then you'll be, uh, they'll be leaving it on. Yeah. I, I can just... Okay, go ahead. Didn't worry. The one is the victim. Yeah. Uh, so just to add to when the member is able to turn the camera off. So in a situation where uh, someone comes to the officer and says, actually, I don't want to uh, give you a statement right now because I'm not comfortable being on camera. If they're a victim or a witness, then it's in our guidelines that the member can shut the camera off in order to facilitate that statement or compliance with that victim or witness. However, if the person is um, a subject that's under investigation, it's we're, we're not going to shut it off if they ask us to.